So we, it's 10.02, and we wanted to start the Access to Finance series here um, hosted by Bell Trade. So welcome to part three. And this, in this Access to Finance series, we'll be talking to the Atlantic Bank of Belize Limited, who will be talking about financing options for international trade. Um, to get right into the midst of things, I want to invite Dr. Almendares to give us an opening remarks. And this remarks kind of captures what we have been doing, as mentioned, this is part three, and why exactly we're doing this Access to Finance series. So Dr. Almendares. Can you hear me? Hi, good morning, good morning, good morning, Nikki, and thanks, and good morning, everybody. Just that everybody can hear me. Again, this, um, I want to thank the Bell Trade team and our, and our partners, in this case, Atlantic Bank, because at this point, and the fact that MSMEs play such an, a foundational role in terms of uh, employment, but not only employment, I think we have to also add poverty alleviation, and, and, and quite a lot of, because the, the contributions are, are great. And so any, any, kind, any discussion that will engage our MSMEs and, and our partners in terms of finding some facility, of course, we're talking about facility that's, and if I can use the word affordable, a facility that will help these MSMEs, but also create uh, you know, mutual um, relationship between the, in this case, Atlantic Bank and those MSMEs. And of course, as Nikki uh, indicated, Bell Trade will continue to be here and providing that level of support that is necessary. And our support goes beyond the webinar because even after this and simultaneously with all that is happening here, we are also engaged as a part of the coordinating committee and a part of the economic recovery subcommittee that will um, contribute greatly to the recovery process, and not only on behalf of the government because it also engages the private sector. So myself, I will sit in and, and, and listen, and just will have to provide that, that support to these MSMEs. So I don't want to delay it any further, just to say a welcome, and I hope that it will be very participatory and to, then to ensure that we can get as much as we can in terms of conversations uh, from the webinar today. So thank you, Nikki, and thank you all, and do enjoy and participate. Thank you very much for that, Dr. Almendares. As he mentioned, it's about finding reasonable solutions that are going to help our businesses across Belize, um, considering what is going on right now with COVID-19 and the effects that it has been having on our economy. So thank you very much for that introduction. And I want to say that from Atlantic Bank Limited, we have both the managers from the Belmopan branch and the San Ignacio branch. With us today, we have Ms. Elsie Moratoya. She's the manager from the Belmopan branch. And from San Ignacio, we have Ms. Sean Alpuche. Um, Ms. Elsie will be giving us some brief remarks, just a little bit of background on why they're here and why they're part participating in this Access to Finance series. And from there, we'll jump into the presentation. Just a little bit of information. Um, your questions, whatever questions you may have, can be posed in the comment section here, or can also be posed, because we're live on Facebook, can also be posed in the comment section on Facebook. And after we get those questions, we have with us the team from Export Belize, which um, is led by the manager, Ms. Shahira McCoy. Shahira and the team will be collecting those questions and then we'll pitch them to the team at Atlantic Bank and then they will be answered. Anyone who joins in, just please make sure that if you do have a question, you can raise your hands and we'll um, reach out to you um, during the course of the presentation. But we want the Atlantic Bank team to be able to have their presentation and then we feed them questions afterwards. So I'll, let, I'll start by introducing Ms. Elsie Morotoya, who is the manager for Atlantic Bank Belmopan branch, and she'll be giving us some short remarks. Ms. Elsie? Hi, good morning, everybody. 
Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank the Bell Trade for inviting us to this um, Access to Finance series. Today, yes, indeed, we're focusing on international trade financing. And why the focus on this? Well, Atlantic Bank recognizes that international trade is vital in prom promoting economic growth, in raising the standards of living and employment rates, assisting in providing customers options for consumption, and most importantly, the development of industries that support the generation of foreign exchange, which we can agree is paramount for any country that is a net importer. The bank provides short-term and long-term cash flow support, access to foreign exchange, as well as counterparty or payment risk mitigation solutions to qualifying importers and exporters. International transactions are adversely affected by any undue delays, any deviation from the agreed upon timeline. That is the time it takes for an importer to purchase supply from suppliers abroad, raw materials, material or equipment before selling and collecting in order to pay debts or bills. On the flip side of the coin, the exporter side, it impacts the time in between purchasing raw materials processing or manufacture, manufacturing the goods, storing, transporting, and awaiting payment from their buyers. Financial institutions then facilitate these transactions by acting as an intermediary between buyers and sellers, providing access to finance and thus improving liquidity and reducing trade risk. Most recently, COVID-19 has highlighted the need to invest in the export market, given our high dependency on tourism. Atlantic Bank is one of the largest lenders to the tourism industry, but it is also the largest lender to the agriculture, uh, sorry, agriculture and associated industries. The bank has always been supportive and will continue to be so of all types of farming from subsistence farming to large commercial export focused farming. The current tightening of availability of foreign exchange may be alleviated with higher levels of export. Atlantic Bank then has renewed its line with the IDB, which is the Inter-American Development Bank, to help support and facilitate trade, both locally and internationally. IDB first approved the line in 2010 and ABL is proud to say that it is the only bank and the first bank in Belize to be a member of the trade finance program. The IDB had created a line for select banks in member countries to assist in individual trade related transactions, thereby supporting credit transactions for importers and exporters within the Caribbean and Latin American countries. The IDB via the Local banks, or Atlantic Bank in this instance, helps to facilitate buyers or sellers within Belize with financing options, shortening cash flow cycles, that is the time it takes to sell inventory, collect from customers, and paying debts, as well as access to foreign exchange. Our presentation then includes those products that can assist both importers and exporters with finance or with products designed to mitigate risks of payments or collections. So let me proceed with sharing the screen. Okay, so financing options and services for international trade with Atlantic Bank via the International Trade Finance Program. Under this program is what we call an ITL, or the International Trade Line which is a revolving facility that is granted to facilitate inter international trade. And this international trade includes both importers and exporters. It is easily accessible and appropriately priced financing options for both importers and exporters. And it supports globally recognized methods of payment to ensure risk mitigation. Within the international trade line, is the pre-import financing um, termed as a PIF and the pre-export financing or PEF. 
There's also standby, standby letters of credit and collections. Some of the advantages or benefits associated with this line is that it offers competitive interest rates. It offers priority access to foreign exchange for payments, especially for those importers. It's a short term cash flow support. The financing terms range anywhere from 30 to 180 days. So it will be 30 days minimum or 60, 90 and 100 days maximum. So with this, it helps strengthen trade relationships. It links the buyers with the sellers internationally. It also secures overseas trade payments or collections, and it serves as a negotiation platform for optimal repayment terms with suppliers or buyers. So I will switch it on now to Mr. Alpuche, who will be discussing in more detail these types of financing or services. Mr. Alpuche. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Moratoya. And good morning, everyone. Thank you, thank you all for joining. Um, one of the uh, one of the services that we are offering under the um, IDB program is what we call a pre-import financing. What does that do? It provides a short-term funding um, primarily to the distribution, which is the wholesale, wholesale and retail and agricultural sector, Hello, as well as financing. Hello. Hello. Sorry to interrupt, but we're not hearing you well. I'm not sure if you need to come a little bit closer to your screen or video. Okay, okay How that's about better. Now? How about There's now? a little bit of a, um, I know, I'm not sure if you're close to someone else that is also playing the video, but let's try it again. Okay, can, can you hear me now? It's, it's better. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, as, as I was saying, um, uh, one of the products that is being offered by the um, IDB uh, through Atlantic Bank is what we call the pre-import financing. What it does, it provides a short-term funding primarily to the distribution, wholesale slash resale sector, and the agricultural sector, as well as project financing. Suppliers often require prepayment on the importations of goods and services, which immediately impact on the importer's cash flow. What it does and how this pre-import financing benefits the individual or the importer is we offer competitive rates, interest rates, interest and principal are due at maturity, allows payments to the suppliers without restricting cash flow requirements for the day-to-day -day operations. It allows customers has better control of financing costs with predetermined maturity dates, and the terms are within 30, 60, 90, and 100 days. What does that mean? Primarily, it means that, it primarily means that the, the minimum term to access the, the funding under the pre import financing is 30 days, and you can go for a maximum of 180 days. Um, the additional benefit under this program is the customers with access to international trade line, will receive priority access. Ah, sorry. Sorry, can, are, are, can, you, can, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right, thank you. Sorry. Customers with access, um, the benefit again under the pre import finances is that customers with access to the international trade line will receive priority access to much needed foreign exchange ensuring the timely satisfaction of contractual obligations. As we all are aware, foreign exchange is one of the key factors that is currently affecting the country. And through this line and through this product and through this product that we are offering to our customers, we are able to have um, financing available for foreign exchange for these payments to be made. Um, for example, I would say off the top that we have been having struggles in getting agricultural products into the country and probably some medicinal products into the country due to a shortage of foreign exchange. However, under the pre imports financing, we are able to access foreign exchange and able to make these payments out for, uh, on behalf of our suppliers so that we are able to get these products into the country. Like the pre imports financing that is allowing 
products to come into the country, we also have what we call a pre-export financing. And again, it works as a short-term bridge financing type facility that provides cash flow support, assists with the costs associated with making a product export market ready. And again, this pre-export financing provides repayment terms of 30, 60, 90, and 180 days. The pre-export financing is geared towards the productive manufacturing sector. Bank finances costs such as raw materials, storage, transportation, or any other costs related to getting that product into its final stage, and it functions and it functions as an advance on the sale of goods. The pre-import pre financing benefits again comes with competitive interest rates. It assists in cash flow needs until payments are made by the buyers abroad. Principal and interest are to be paid within the predetermined comfortable maturity term, which is between 30, 60, 90, and 180 days. And repayment term is aligned with the term of export contract. Transaction processing for pre-imports and pre-exports financing requires documents necessary for, for the, for the pre-import financing includes transfer, wire transfer in instructions, central bank permits, invoices, and custom entries where applicable. Documents required for the pre-export financing includes purchase, um, yeah, purchase orders and or export contracts. Now, under the trade, trade financing services, we have a product that is called a standby letter of credit. The standby letter of credit used as security to cover the buyer's contractual obligation to the supplier. A standby undertaking by the bank is to provide the supplier, is to pay the supplier should the applicant breach in terms of the contract, whether, whether financially or otherwise. Um, and the bank, which is the importer's bank to the bank, which is an exporter's bank. Sorry. Trade services, we have document against payment. This is another service that we offer, which is a document against payment primarily means that the collection of money is owed by a buyer against a delivery of certain documents, which is called a bill of lading. The bank intervenes on behalf of the exporter and provides support to the exporter for this type of payment to be arranged. There is also documents against acceptance, which is a collection of monies owed by a buyer against a bill of exchange accepted. And the buyer pays upon a defined maturity date. The application process is contract, contact your nearest, your nearest Atlantic Bank branch, discuss financing options to best suit your needs. The requirements would be company or business registration documents, beneficial ownership information, business plan, financial statements, collateral, or any other information that we may require to facilitate the process. With that being said, anybody has any questions, any concerns, any clarity that they may require for us to explain further? Hi, good morning. Um, so far, this is uh, Shahira McCoy from Beltrain. So far, there are two questions that I've seen in the chat. Um, the first one is asking to go into a, a little bit more about the appropriate prices and the interest rates. And the second question um, is uh, asking if the facilities support accepting of payment for service-based businesses. So those are the two questions so far. Hi, Shahira. Um, let me answer the first question. It was about pricing, right? And the interest rates, the appropriate prices and interest rates. Well, like any credit facility, it all depends on the risk assessment. Um, it depends on how stable the business is, how um, in demand the product being offered is, how the collateral that is um, providing it's a it's really an entire assessment of the borrower at that point 
So that's, I can't give a definitive interest rate on that. It just will, I can only say it will depend on all those factors. Um, what was the second question? So the second question was from BK Creative Belize. I'm not sure what part of the presentation they were referring to, but the question is, is this only for products or does the bank also support accepting of payment for service-based businesses? All right, in this instance, um, this would be specifically for products, not to say that we do not assist in the service sector as well. Okay, I hope that answers the question for them. And of course, if you guys have additional questions, you can always contact the bank for those. We have another one from Anthony Pollard who is asking, what are the requirements to get funds if you don't have a starting capital for a new business? If you do not have starting capital for new businesses, it is a little bit difficult. Um, as a financial domestic institution, we do require some type of um, contribution towards any investment. But then again, we have to look at how long this business has been in existence. For new businesses, it becomes a little bit more risky and therefore we, we approach it a bit more carefully. Um, definitely what we would need is a sound business plan before we can start and assess anything else. Um, so following up to Chris's question in regards to what are the appropriate prices and the interest rates, he asked to give an indication of whether or not the percentage of that interest rate is better than the regular nine or 10 percent that you guys offer. Yes. But again, it depends on the collateral. For instance, if you are providing cash as collateral, which we know is not normally the case, but if it is, you qualify for a, an interest rate, certainly a lot lower than the nor normal rates. But we do have some consideration given that this is promoting trade finance and as such, we would price it accordingly. It can range anywhere between, I don't know, six and a half to nine percent. Okay. But again, it's dependent on the risk we're, we're undergoing. Right. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Um, along the same rates line, David is asking, everyone understand rates depend on credit worthiness. Everyone also understand rates have a range. And what is the top and bottom of that range? Would that 6% to 9% answer it? Or is that something else that we should know? I think the 65 to 9% range should um, answer that question. Okay. So Anthony also wants to know, what if they have land and other equipment? Does that help in the process? Yes. Or Mr. Um, Sean? Yes. Yes, Mr. Um, Mr. Pollard, in the, there is a range of factors that will determine the interest rate. And yes, for sure, the, the aspect of, of land collateral and also equipment is, is something that we, we also look at. So in, in this case, um, we do would invite you to come in for us to discuss further your, your plans and, and how you can get further guidance in getting, in getting your business up and going, especially if it's a new venture that you are going into. So add on to that. Um, if Mr. Pollard has equipment already for his project and he has, we do consider that as a part of contribution. So I think he was the one that was asking about um, startup capital and so on, right? Yes, he was. Because that his questions previously before that was what were the requirements to get funds if you don't have a starting capital for a new business. Then his follow up was what if you have um, the land or other equipment. And then exactly, so yes, yes that asking, we consider as a part of contribution. Okay, he's asking which branch do you go to to get more information? Does that matter? Or whatever branch is in your area, right? No, he can visit any of our branches. Um, we have offices in Placencia, San Ignacio, Corozal, Orange Walk, Belize City. We have both the Albert Street and Freetown um, branches. 
San Pedro, Keycocker, and of course, Balmopan and San Ignacio. Okay. I'm not seeing any other questions in the group. Um, if you guys do have any other questions, you can send them in the comment section here. Uh, mention if you're following on Facebook and have questions, you can also add them there. Uh, question Hi, was um, Hello. Hi, sorry. I just like to add on that well, while we were focusing on international trade here, um, we also are developing products to promote local trade. Especially, I mean, during these times, a lot of people do not want to be, or, or are staying away from stores, they're staying away from businesses, trying to do everything online. So we have several projects ongoing right now that will improve the services that we do online. Um, several businesses have been signing up for our online platform whereby you can actually go on and pay um, several businesses, um, bills, uh, bills and services. So there's a lot coming um, with that Atlantic Bank. We're, we're trying to promote small business as well. Uh, you know, we, we have our point of sale terminals, the debit and credit card. Those are now chipless or contactless. So you do not even have to provide your card to, or you shouldn't provide your card to the attendant and you just tap it and that saves you a bit of contact sharing there as well. Um, we encourage everybody to sign up for online banking. You never know when, if there is a lockdown again and you know, it's best to be safe and sound. Um, so do, Try to sign up for online bank if you don't yet have. It's pretty easy and it's very convenient. Thank you very much for that, Miss Elsie. I think that um, goes back to one of the questions that I was going to add just now, where the person asked whether does the bank offer financing options to support entrepreneurs who want to start a business? And um, I know you're saying that there are some products that are coming up, but to directly answer that question, what would you say? Again, um, startup businesses are considered risky by any financial institution, but we do not turn them back. We look at the potential, and that is why the, the, one of the requirements is to bring in a sound business plan. Most entrepreneurs come in and they want financing, but they don't have all the details we would require. Now I know SBDC and, and Beltrade do assist in um, doing business plans. So I'd advise any new entrepreneur to visit your offices and have, you know, you assist with the business plans before they approach the financial institution. Okay. Yes, indeed. Um, SBDC believes, and I think we have the manager here online with us, they do offer support to help you in terms of creating a business plan and having everything together should you require financing and want to go into an institution. Um, but Ms. Elsie, I'm not seeing any other questions here as yet, but kind of give me an idea in terms of the industries. What different industries can you guys facilitate? Agriculture, you mentioned tourism, is there any other industry? Well, the distribution sector as well. Um, as Mr. Alpucha mentioned, you know, there's a demand for bringing in food related products, for bringing in um, machinery, equipment, uh, pharmaceuticals, and well, equipment that's used for whether it be road construction or in the fields. So we're engaged in all the industries. Um, we, today we just wanted to focus mostly on the distribution and the productive sector. Uh, we can all agree that the productive sector is somewhere, is, is, is an industry that we do need to capitalize on. Um, we do have a high dependency on tourism for foreign exchange earning. And the demand in distribution actually depends on the tourism simply because of the foreign exchange that it brings in. Okay. 
Thank you for that. And also, um, can you outline the process of applying for the pre-export financing? Like, what exactly does an exporter need to do? All right. Um, the pre-export is like any other credit facility. So they would come in, make an appointment with any of our ROs or branch managers and bring in all documents that you would if you were to apply for a loan. Your business plan, if there's any, your financials, um, whatever collateral you're going to offer and a history of your exports, if you've already been in the export um, business. Once we take a look at all that, um, there has to be a contract of sorts or a sales agreement between you and whoever your buyer is. It is those um, same contracts that we would base ourselves on in terms of your repayment on the line. So once you're approved, it, it undergoes all the general assessments and once you're approved for the line, let's say up to 500,000 and you have to access maybe 200,000 to purchase raw materials before you export the goods. So you come in, you do, a, we do a drawdown via um, the IDB line. You receive your raw products and we know that that sales contract states that you will be paid within 60 days. So we expect that after disbursement, you will be paying down that 100,000 that you've um, drawn, drawn on with the incoming wire from the goods you've exported. Okay. And what exactly does the, the pre-export finance fund, what can they use this money for? Okay, the, the pre-imports, it's pre-imports. It's pre-imports. It's, is that the question you were asking about pre-imports? Well, I was asking pre-export. Um, right. So what exactly does it fund? That's why it, it funds for you to, to purchase material, raw material needed for you to, um, to get your finished products whereby you will be sending out to, to, your, um, to your supplier, no? Sorry, to your buyer in this case. So apart, adding to what Ms. Um, Ms. Elsie in, indicated about the requirements that we need, it, that is what it does. We, we, it allows you that opportunity for us to finance you the raw material needed for you to get your product um, exported out of the country. Okay. I believe that's all the questions we have for now. If there's anyone else in the group that wants to add any last minute questions, need anything clarified from the team, we're here right now, um, just let us know. So we're gonna maybe a minute to just wrap up. And um, thank you guys for participating in this Access to Finance series. This is of course, as I mentioned, part three of the series. Upcoming, we might look at access to finance as regards to the MSME support program that the government of Belize has recently launched. Um, for right now, we want to, of course, thank the Atlantic Bank Limited for being here with us today, but also for being one of our partners and stakeholders here at Bell Trade. There's a lot of initiatives that we've partnered with with Atlantic Bank, and we encourage people to either continue following us on Facebook and also follow Atlantic Bank to see what else they may have coming up. So if there are no other questions, I'd like to move, if Shahira is available, I'm hoping that she can access the feed um, to maybe give us a, a little bit of remarks or to close off this session. Shahira? Hello, are you guys hearing me? Oh. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, we yes. are. Okay, um, no, I just want to take the opportunity to thank everybody who logged on today. Um, I know that access to finance is a key area for 
all businesses, not just our exporters, but we will create the linkages between uh, providers of finances and, and those who are looking to, to access finance. Um, thank Atlantic Bank for continuously being our partner and um, just want to say that if there's additional questions after this webinar that we're uh, here to continue to facilitate and make the linkage with those over at the Atlantic as well. Thank you very much for that, Shahira. And once again, I'd like to extend my thanks to Dr. Almendaris for participating in this session today, to everyone at Beltree, to everyone who actually clicked the link and wanted to hear more. As mentioned, keep tuning in, keep paying attention to our Facebook and other faces Facebook pages to see what else is coming up from Beltrade and from the government of Belize. As I mentioned, the MSME support program is coming up soon. Um, once again, thank you, Atlantic Bank. Thank you, Ms. Elsie Moratoya. Thank you, Mr. Sean Alpuche. If there are no other questions or comments, thank you guys for, for being here and we'll see you at the next one. Thank, thank you. Thank you too for the invite and we look forward to some queries in the upcoming days or weeks. Okay. And Thank with you. our continued Sorry. partnership. Dr. Leroy? No, I just wanted to say thanks again to Atlantic Bank as well, and of course the Beltre team, and indeed let's continue the partnership. Okay, thank you everyone, and have a great day. <laughs>